Um, so I had been living in Longmont, Colorado that day at that time, and I was driving back in the United States, driving back to uh, Westchester, New York, uh, to visit with my parents. And um, so I drove you know, a lot of miles that day. It took more than one day to drive back. It's about 2,000 miles. And uh, when I got home, I found out a, f a f high school friend of mine was having a party. And uh, I wanted to go to the party. Actually, my roommate in Colorado was also a high school friend of mine. We lived out there together. And so we came back to visit our folks. And I went to the party. We went in separate cars. Uh, I was drinking and doing some drugs also. Um, and I was a little high, not what I considered too high to drive, but I uh, asked for a ride home from my friend. A big part of my motivation was that the, the young lady who was having the party I thought was pretty and I could go back the next day and talk to her. Um, when I was almost home, I remembered that my sister, who was staying at my parents' house at the time, also needed the car in the morning for work. So I asked my friend to drive me back and he protested, but I assured him I was just overacting being high. The truth is I thought I was, but I really wasn't because I do remember leaving the party after he drove me back. And then the next thing I remember is I was out of my body in the white light looking down my body was leaning against a tree and there was a police officer sort of uh, not kneeling crouching over me I assume he pulled me out of the car and the car was there squished beyond what it looked like I could survive and my head was I always get mixed up which side the, the scars on but you can still see it it goes all the way back my head was you know cut open so. I was in the white light. It, it felt like a short experience, but the it just felt like I was in this incredibly loving light. Even though I saw my body smashed up, it seemed perfectly fine. Like everything was fine. You know, every just everything seemed fine beyond what usually I experience when I'm alive physically. Um, but it felt like a lot of love, a lot of understanding and wisdom and just like connected to the universe. And I, I'm a, even though it's years ago, I'm still trying to find the way to describe it because it was just so like just knowing everything, but really at the same time, not really knowing anything. It wasn't in words. It was just more of a feeling. Uh, I didn't look this way, but it seemed what I knew was there was this giant white light being that and a smaller being and the smaller being said to me you have to go back your father wants you to stay after that I in some ways the biggest thing that happened to me was I started meeting a lot of people that had near-death experiences that were spiritual teachers and healing teachers um, so the words of how I describe what happened really came to me later when some of these teachers were talking to me. One in particular, who was a Sufi sheikh, he started talking about the ocean of divine love and benevolence. And I go, oh, that's what it, the white light all around me. When he started talking to me about God, I really wasn't a very spiritual or religious person at that time. I go, wow, that was the big white light behind me. When he started talking about Jesus, I go, that was, you know, just the feeling that came to me when he spoke those words were the same as the feeling then. So after that happened, I, the voice said, go back into your box, go back, your father wants you to stay. So I went back and woke up in the hospital three days later with a new mission in life, which was to find out about all that stuff. It was, it was sort of like being in a cloud, if you could imagine that. I mean, it was just, it, there was a nice soft feeling to it. It wasn't a very extremely bright light either. It was kind of soft white. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just, the, I'm a very kinesthetic person. So even my experience a lot, when I'm physically alive, is a lot about how things feel emotionally and, and you know, touching with my hands. So I, I, you know, my thoughts about it are is that basically God communicates to us in our own language and my language is definitely feeling as opposed to words usually you know i've learned 
a lot from being educated, a lot because most people want you to speak words, that to learn how to speak, but a lot of it is how do I put my feelings into words. So during that, it was like a direct transmission through my feelings. No, I'm laughing because it's such a joyful thing. It's like, you know, and it is hard to put my word, the words on it, and it is almost like guessing. And then when I say it, it's like, yeah, that's what it was. As soon as I think of it, it connects into this amazing energy. And, and part of my gift from doing that is I can help other people connect into that, which is another great joy of my life. In my near-death experience, they were actually behind me. So it was more of, in, I, I do have an image, but it was like I, they were behind me, but I sort of knew what they looked like. They, the big white light was just a big white light. There was no form to it. The small one, it looked like a different shade of white, really, that could have been a person, but I didn't see any features or anything like that. It was sort of just like a light being. That's it. It was like I, like I said, it was almost like I, I didn't have any questions in my mind about anything. Everything just seemed right and proper, and it is sort of like I knew everything. I seemed to understand my accident was okay. Even, you know, any family dilemmas, just, it just seemed the whole world, just everything made sense in a way. And, uh, Again, it's hard to put into words, but it, you know, sometimes things just seem right and proper. It's sort of like on a beautiful summer day or whatever season you like, and it's just beautiful out and you feel good. That's real. And then multiply that times, you know, a million or whatever. So that's what it's like. Yeah.